11, chapter 6, it says, Without faith it is impossible to please him, for he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. And we are here tonight to seek him. The Bible says that it is impossible to please him without peace and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. So tonight, man, if you have not been to a seek, man, this is kind of what we do at seek, man. We're going to come and we're just going to worship him and then we're going to go into a time of praying for the things of the church. Then we're going to go into a time of praying uh, for you and, and you husbands and wives and you who are single or different things that are going on your month, this month, that you're just really saying, God, I just, I just give it to you. And we just have a great time in prayer. And then we close with a couple songs of worship and just say, God, we are here tonight to pursue you. And we're here tonight to say, God, we want to seek you. And in that, God, we, we want to say, God, I want to please you. This month of June, I want to please you. But God, I can't please you unless I'm walking by faith. Unless I'm really saying, God, I surrender to a point to say, God, I am truly laying everything down. And I'm laying at your feet to walk by a trust, by a peace, to say, God, you're in control. And you see and know all things, God, and you're in control. And in that, Father, I'm going to walk by faith. And it may be things tonight that you know are taking place this month. You know that there's a doctor's appointment. You know that there's a bill that needs to be paid. And that we lay at his feet tonight. Say, God, we walk by faith, not by sight, that you're a miraculous working God that can do all things. And we trust you for it. And then there's those, those moments that we walk by faith with the, with the things that we don't know about with the things that are unseen in this month to say, God, I didn't see this one coming. And we just laid at his feet to say, God, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna trust you. I'm just gonna walk by peace because tonight I give it to you. The things that I don't know that's gonna take place because we come together and say, God, I trust you for this, that which is unseen and that which is unknown. And God, your word says that I walk by faith and not by sight. God, I don't have to see it to believe it, but God, I walk by faith then in the midst of the unseen, God, whatever is going to take place this month, I'm going, to, I'm going to walk by faith because I gave it to you tonight. Man, seek is a powerful, powerful night of faith where we enact our faith and we trust in him and we walk by faith. Let's just have a time. Father, we just, we just come before you, God, and we do. Ultimately, Father, we want to Walk in a manner worthy of you, and we want to please you in all respects, God. We want to please you. God, that means we have to enact our faith to be able to please you. And God, we want to walk by faith. And Father, this month, the month of June, we just give it to you. It's your month, God. It starts. It starts in a place tonight. And Father, our pursuit after you, our sense of worshiping you and honoring you and acknowledging you. And God, that our response to you would be one of worship. God, that would be our response. And in that, Father, we come to a place to just surrender all. And we come to a place to say, God, I belong to you. I'm in. I'm, I'm, I'm yours. I belong to you. And I trust you. With everything in my life, God, I trust you. I trust you in my singleness. I trust you in being a teenager. I trust you. I trust you in being a young adult. God, I trust you. Father, I trust you in my career. I trust you. God, in my marriage. In my marriage, God, I trust you. In my spouse, my husband or my wife, God, I trust you. My finances, I trust you. God, in a sickness, I trust you. Man, what a great place to be tonight that we just say, God, I trust you. And I lay it at your feet. And Father, I just pray that there's a sense of reality in here tonight that we just would truly be overcome by, by a peace that is truly surpassing all understanding, God. We are surrounded by a joy that just would just bubble up within our hearts tonight because of a peace that would just come. And we thank you for it tonight. And God, let our response to you tonight be one of worship. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, let's celebrate the life that we have through Jesus. Amen? Amen. Are you ready? to just be thankful tonight for the life that we have in Christ, to know that he is alive in us, to know that apart from him, what we do here tonight means nothing. This time is his time, amen? Come on, let's celebrate that together.
Come on, let's put the hands together tonight.
God, you are worthy. How'd you tell him that tonight? God, you are worthy. Father, you are holy. God, let us draw near to you tonight. God, let us press in tonight. Come close to you.
Nothing can compare. You're a living all. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves. When my heart becomes free. And my shame is undone In your presence, Lord Let's sing that again There's nothing worthwhile That will ever come close No thing can compare Your living home Your glory, God is. 
let's sing faithful together. Faithful you are. Faithful forever you will be. Oh, faithful you are. Yes, you are. And all your promises are yes and amen. All your promises are yes and amen. Sing our rest. I will rest in your promises. My confidence is in your faithfulness. I will rest in your promises. My confidence is in your faithfulness. Sing it again. I will. when he says, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. I will give you peace. I will give you joy. I will give you strength. God, we say thank you today. We say thank you because you are great. You are mighty. There's no one like you. God, with everything in us tonight, we say thank you. And we trust that you are faithful. Come on, amen.
Amen. Come on, let's give God thanks for that tonight. Amen. Amen. Well, you may be seated. I was just reminded of, of a story as I'm just praying and just thinking about what it is to really follow Jesus and just no matter what, just to follow Jesus no matter what. No matter if you're going through the best season of life, like we don't forget that that best season of life could come because we serve a great God and not forget him in the worst season of life to say, God, I trust in you to see me through just what it is to follow Jesus really no matter what, no matter what's going on in our lives, what's it look like just to follow him? What's it look like to give a response of worship to him because of what he's done in our life and just what am I, I have so many favorite Bible stories, I probably say that all the time, but one of my favorite Bible stories is when Jesus heals the young man who was blind from birth. He spits in the ground and he makes mud. Like, could you imagine never seeing anything in your life and hearing this rumbling of a guy's voice in his spit? And he probably, to be honest, has been spit at as he begged by the gate, so he probably understood what that noise meant. And here you've got this person before him who, who conjures up the spit. Just maybe, maybe this blind man was thinking, man, someone else is just going to spit on me. He spits on the ground and he makes mud and he puts them on his eyes and says to go to the pool and wash and you'll be healed. No one's ever done that. Like, no one's ever done this before. Like, this is a crazy story. It's a crazy thought. The dude just spit on the ground and he made mud and he put on my eyes. And he said, find my way to the pool and I'll be healed. And you imagine that he goes to the pool and he, and he washes in the pool and all of a sudden his sight comes. First time forever this man sees. He sees color. He sees animals. He sees people. He sees his parents for the first time. And all of a sudden, you'd think, you'd think that there'd be joy in the village. You'd think that people would be amazed at what just happened. You'd think there'd be a celebration for this young man. But it was ridicule, and it was ridicule, and it was ridicule. And it was ridicule, and there was arguments over this man. Well, I don't know if it's really him. He's like, it's me. Come on. I don't know if it's really you. I sat at the gate and begged, and you put your little change in my pot. I, I haven't changed appearance. I haven't. I, I just, my eyes are open. It's me. I don't know. Paul says they went back and forth. Are you kidding me? They went back. His neighbors, people who knew him. I don't know if it's really him. It's me. Then they went and got the Pharisees involved and the Pharisees came and they began to judge him and they began to ridicule him and they began to come against him and they began to ask him questions. Well, what happened? Well, I know that there was a man and I know that his name is Jesus. Somewhere somebody must have yelled out Jesus. I know that his name is Jesus. I haven't seen him. I don't know what he looks like, but I know that his name is Jesus. And he spit in the mud and he put in my eyes and he told me to go to wash that I would see, and that's what happened, and now I see. I see you, and I see you, and I see you, and I see, I can see. That's what happened. These guys were all ripped because it was on the Sabbath. And they started coming against him even harder, and they got his parents involved. Has, who is this? Did, was he really blind, or is he faking? Is he making up the story on the count of Jesus? Could, could you imagine this, church? over and over ridiculed and ridiculed. You would think that there would be a celebration. You would think that people would be amazed. You would think that people would be pumped for this young man. You might actually think that his parents might be excited. But they came and they got his parents and his own parents because they were so in fear. The Bible says, John 9, you can read it. They were so in fear of these just awful, hypocritical Pharisees that they wouldn't even answer. They say, well, you need to go ask him because he's of an age that he's old enough to answer for himself because the Bible says they were afraid to be excommunicated. What? 
Are you serious right now, mom and dad? You can't be juiced and pumped for your son that from birth he has never seen, and now he has sight, and his name is Jesus. Jesus healed my boy. Jesus healed my son, and I don't give a rip what you think. But no. Because they were so in fear of them. They turned their back on their son. Crazy. What would you do to follow Jesus? How far, how far will you go tonight in a sense of you saying, God, I need to trust you in this. God, I don't have the answer for this. God, I don't know what this is going to take place. God, I don't know what the answer from the doctor is going to be. God, I don't know what's going to happen. God, I don't know, but I will go as far as it takes to put my trust in you. Whatever it looks like to trust in you. No matter who follows me, no matter who's against me, if it's my friends, if they bail, I'm good. If it's my parents, if they bail, I'm good. The Pharisees came again a second time. Now who is this that healed you? He must be a sinner. And I love this. I love it. John 9, 30, John 9 says this, John 9. 25, and then he answered. I love this quote. Then he answered. Whether this man is a sinner or not, I don't know. But what I do know is I was blind, but now I see. That's what I know. I've never even seen him. I know his name is Jesus. He came up to me. I couldn't see. Spit on the ground. Made mud. Put it on my eyes. Told me to go wash. This man did that. Jesus did that. I don't know who he is, but I do know this, it says, that he has to be from God. Because this has never been done before. He has to be from God. And then these Pharisees just get ripped. They just get ripped. They excommunicate him. Could you imagine? Your parents just being okay with that? And here when the time in his life he should be most, most celebrated. His neighbors have turned on him. His own parents have turned on him. The Pharisees have checked his story twice. And they kick him out. It's amazing because Jesus hears this and the Bible says that Jesus came to him. It should be the most amazing time of celebration in his life. How far will you go in your response to follow Jesus? He could have just said, fine, let me back in. I don't know who it was. Probably was Jesus. Maybe he was a sinner. That's all he had to say. held to his ground and said, no, 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 no. And he really punched him in the face by saying, maybe you even want to be one of his disciples. And then they just got really angry. I don't know who he is. I don't know if he's a sinner or not, but what I know is I was blind and now I see. And then Jesus pursues this young it's so amazing because Jesus come to him. It's amazing that he hasn't even recognized that it's Jesus. He's never seen him before. You got to understand his story. Jesus healed him and he put mud on his face and he was still blind when Jesus, he's never seen his healer. He doesn't know who he is and Jesus stands before him. You ever met the, the son of man? No, who is he in his eye? And he's referencing, it's me who healed you, and I am the Messiah. And, the, and the, get this, get this, get this. The man's response, how far will you go, church? How far will you go to follow Jesus? The man didn't turn back to run back. The man didn't turn back to go, to go after the Pharisees. The man didn't turn back for his mom and dad. He turned to Jesus. Jesus pursued him. Jesus before him now. Jesus says, listen, have you ever? No, I haven't. Well, who is he? It's me. And he goes into this whole sense where the Bible says that the man fell on his face. He says, Lord, I believe. I get it. It's you. You're my passion. You're the one who healed me. You are the Christ. And the Bible says he fell on his face before his feet and did what? Did what? He worshiped him. 
How far will you go? No matter who turns their back, no matter who, who, no matter who, who, who comes against you, no matter what it looks like, how far will you go to say, I'm in? How far will you go to say, I believe your promises are yes and amen. Yes, I believe that your promises are true, church. Come on, how far will you go no matter what, <coughs> excuse me, what circumstance that you're in tonight, no matter what you're asking for for June? How far will you go? Think didn't really turn out great for him. Everybody turned against him. And yet he had Jesus. And he worshiped him. The cool part about this is it was right in front of all the Pharisees. It's great. So how far we're going to go to trust him. Psalm 37 says this, and then we'll pray. I love this. It says, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and cultivate faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Don't misunderstand that verse. Delight yourself in the Lord. Pleasure yourself in the Lord. Come to that place of knowing him and, and being in great pleasure in his presence. The Bible says that in his presence there is the fullness of joy. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. But isn't it amazing that our heart, as a follower of Christ, should be filled with not really much about me. It should be filled with that which is selfless. So the desires of your heart that he will grant are selfless desires. Well, I didn't get that new car that I desired. Well, maybe that was a little selfish, maybe. Don't turn it against God when he says, listen, he will give you the desires of your heart. I love this. I love this. Here it is. Commit your way to the Lord. Commit your way. God, I am committing. Can I just say this tonight, please? And then we'll pray. God, God, I am committing. And this is an amazing, incredible Hebrew word, commit. It means to roll over to him. That you would just see this whole picture of saying, God, whatever this is this month, I'm just, I'm just doing this, whatever it looks like, to roll it over off of me and I'm rolling it onto, onto you because it says to commit, commit my way to the Lord. That means I'm rolling my way, whatever my way is, I'm rolling it over to you, that I will do my life your way. That, that's it. I will do my life, who I am in my marriage, who I am as a parent, who I am in high school, who I am in college, who I am as a young adult, who I am as single. I will do whatever my life looks like, but I'm going to do it your way. And I commit my way to you. I roll it over to you. I love this. Here it is. Here it is. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him. There's the faith. There's the faith. Trust also in him. And he will do it. And he will do it. Tonight, man, when we go into our time of prayer, when we go into our time of of praying for whatever season of life you're in. You go into time and you begin to pray for your marriage. You begin to pray for one another and you begin to cover this month, God, that we would have the most dynamic, amazing month in our marriage that we've had in so long, God. Let this marriage begin to progress in a direction that is so honoring and pleasing to you that, God, we will see growth and we will see forgiveness and we will see reconciliation and we will see restoration in our home and in our marriage, God, that there is absolutely no way that anything is going to come against us and in this month, God, in a month, in a month, God, we will see such work done between us. If you are in this place and you are single and you're saying, God, this month I will trust you in all of my ways. God, this month my ways are your ways. Everything I do belongs to you. And God, I'm going to trust you in this that you will do it. God, whatever you have for me this month, God, amen, I'll trust you. I'll trust you. And can I just say that whatever would take place 10 days from now, five days from now, 25 days from now, whatever would take place this month, you can say, God, on, on, on this night, tonight, I gave that to you that, that night at sea. God, remember I, I said I walked by faith, not by sight. God, remember I said that I'm giving you this, this, this argument that we're having in my family and in my marriage. God, I've already given you that, that I would respond in a God way to lay myself down. And God, I would walk in a place to forgive. God, I've already given this to you. And God, I'm going to walk by faith because I gave it to you in faith Sunday night at sea grasp the reality of faith. 
Say, God, I'm just, I'm rolling it over to you and I'm just going to trust in you. Then you know what you need to do? You need to roll it over to him and then you just need to trust in him. I had some people that are just going through a difficult time and you say, listen, you got to roll it over and you just really have to trust in him. Oh, that's what you always say. Okay. We just always say, just trust in him. Yes. Yes, church. Commit it to him. Please just trust in him. God, I walk by faith, God. That's what I do. I'm not going to walk by what I see. I'm going to walk by faith. I'm not going to walk by just what the doctor says. God, I'm going to walk by faith and I'm going to trust you, God. God, I'm going to trust you. That's what we do. Father, we just, it's a great moment right now, God. We just come to you. God, this month for this church, you have been so good to us, God. You have been so good to us, Lord. God, we thank you for great fruit this month. We ask for your provision. God, we ask that you would provide a way financially for just so many things and so many people. God, we ask that you would draw people out to this place, God, that they would come into your presence. This month, God, they come into your presence. God, we want a region. We want a region to worship you. God, draw out people to this place. God, bring them into this place to hear from you. Bring in the hurting and the broken. Bring in the lost, God. God, bring in this. Bring them into this place, God. That we would not walk in judgment. We would not walk in a sense of, of beating people up. But God, we do. We want to build people. We want people to leave this place built up, encouraged strong in you. God, that those who are now walking in death in their spirit, God, that they come to a place of life, come to a place of eternal life through Christ. God, there would be an eternal change, God, an eternal change in people's lives this month. God, this month, a change eternally for people, that their eyes would be enlightened, God, that they would see, that they would see that there is a need for you, for, for the cross, for Jesus. God, that you draw them out, draw them out this month, God. Father, we ask that you would protect this place, God. Father, we ask that you would protect this church. Father, we ask that you would protect the people of this church. God, we thank you for your work. God, we ask that you would bless this place, service after service after service, whether it be breakaway, whether it be women's ministry, whether it be kingdom kids, whether it be right here in the sanctuary, God, whatever it would be, Father, we long to be in your presence this week or this month, God. We long to be in your presence this month, God, that your presence would fill this place, God. We want to dwell in your house forever, God. We want to come to that place. The one thing, the one thing we desire is your presence. In your presence, there is joy. In your presence, there is rest. In your presence, there is peace. God, we are in just a broken region, God, that, that, they, that these people would come to a place of hope. This month, God, we would see people come to hope. Those who have no hope, God, those who are lost and broken, Jesus, you would be our hope. And God, that people would come in this place and recognize, Jesus, you're the answer. Jesus, you're our hope. you draw them out and from the moment from the moment they park their car God there's a sense of love and there's a sense of joy and there's a sense of peace we ask that you cover this place in the blood of the lamb for you overcome the enemy by the blood God that you would just cover this place for we are protected and we are guarded God that we would just really walk in a sense of piercing darkness and letting light shine so bright, God, this month. Father, that you draw out people, that we would be bold as a church, we'd be unashamed of your gospel as a church, that we know that we are fighting, and we know that we are fighting, and we know that we are fighting, and God, we will press. 
We will press, God. We will press forward. Father, I ask for your presence in this place this month. I ask that you draw people this month. I ask for joy in this place, God. I ask for life, for life to be in your presence. God, I ask that we would understand, even on a deeper level of what it is, to celebrate you and to honor you and worship. We love you. God, this is your work. We belong to you. We're your people. God, that you would bless every, every song that is sung in your name. God, every message that is preached, God, will be preached with power. From breakaway to here to kingdom kids, from the simplicity of kingdom kids. God, bless that ministry. Thank you. Thank you for what's taking place. Just on the other side of that wall, week after week, Bible memorization. And God, the Bible stories and the games and the fun and the laughter and the crazy. God, it's beautiful. Bless that this month of June. God, bless that room. Bless those kids, God, that the kids in this place this month would have a longing for you. Jesus, you said, permit the kids to come to me. Don't hinder them from coming, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. God, they have such a right to your kingdom. Bless that children's ministry this month. Cover this place, Lord. Father, thank you for June. Whatever turns take place, God, whatever happens, you are already aware. And as a community of believers, God, we'll walk by faith and we'll trust you. Father, we ask for wisdom. Father, we ask for discernment. We ask for discretion. We ask for grace. Jesus, we just won't be like you. Thank you. We love you so much. Bless this house, Lord. In Jesus' name. Come on, amen. And this is your time to just, husbands and wives, it's your time to pray. Young adults, singles, teenagers, it's your time to pray. It's time to gather. It's time to say, God, this month, it's yours. Come on, let's go to prayers.
if you're still praying, please continue to pray. Just want to sing this song tonight. Sing it over you. Sing the words over you. The lyrics will be on the screen. And just know that we are victorious through Christ. No matter what comes this month, no matter what is ahead, that the victory has already been won. next part together simply says it is finished it is done the blood of Jesus is overcome and it is finished and he has won he has won come on let's declare this together over what is ahead this month God we trust you and it is finished it is done the blood of Jesus overcomes. It is finished. He has won. He has won. Sing it is finished. It is finished. It is done. The blood of Jesus overcomes. It is finished. He has won. He has won. It is finished. It is done. The blood of Jesus. 
every part of my world. So take this life and bring it all. It's all that is now yours. God, we believe that tonight. God, we sing that as a song of surrender. You have everything. God, remind us that you're always in control. Remind us that you're always faithful. God, thank you.
with você.
for your freedom. Be thankful for the grace that Christ has given to us. It is incredible. Come on, can we give the Lord praise tonight? Amen. 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 You guys have a great night. <laughs>